doing a remake of episode 7 in the uh, version which I've deleted and will now replace I forgot to include some info also I made a, uh, an error in the first construction which I fixed later but just in case you worked off the first one you would have um, been in error uh, in the review we're going to use the Vesica Pisces to draw this uh, 5 pi ruler which is the same design template used on the Great Pyramid and I'll uh, also be using this as an example how it's used in modern architecture um, I'll use an example from Canada uh, uh, the USA and uh, Australia and show how they're also related in their metrology or system of measurements but first of all I uh, want to show how to draw this and create a phi um, rule and the first method is a um, bit of a uh, cheat you know it's a break away from the spirit of compass and straight edge um, because you want to be as simple as you can and the essence of it is not to use a marked edge and try and not create a um, the same effect on paper but if we can with a can start with a construction line narrow the compass down we're going to draw a, a vesica pisces and use that uh, to create a right angle two circles same compass um, distance and construction line create a right angle Now, you could simply, I hope I'll do it, one, two, three, four marks. Now, you could have drawn to the, or is it simply extending the, the, the pattern out? I might, I'll continue, but, but you can do, just do it with marks, but... Uh, Make it at least more visually appealing, a bit that way. So, what we've uh, done now is create a ruler of sorts. And hold up, there'll be one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And from this, we can uh, set our compass again. Now, First of all, I'm going to set it to 4. And now by adding 4 along with this point, I've created one that's 11. Also, with the 7, we can create the vertical. And now we have the three points which will create our design. We need the four points which we have at five and a half, five by five. So we've now drawn the two-dimensional profile of uh, the Great Pyramid, which is by definition 440 Egyptian royal cubits wide at the southern base, but 440 Egyptian royal cubits. And it is... Uh, 280 Egyptian royal cubits high 
that's an old kingdom royal cubit and one Egyptian royal cubit equals pi over six meters, which is very interesting and uh, a whole other topic. So this is one method of uh, drawing the Great Pyramid, and we have 440 over 280, and for future reference we can reduce this num number down to 11, and this 7, so a ratio of 11, 7, 11 over 7 equaling pi over 2. Uh, so that's one method, and we'll go to the next one. Construction line. And first, what, what, what we'll be drawing is uh, this is just a small illustration of it. A vesica Pisces, which is nestled inside of a, a, a nested vesica Pisces, if you can. So we said cut this again. Same on the other side, I'm brushing, so you can see the, uh, yeah, the, this is the diagram that we'll be drawing next. Just a quick illustration how it's a vesica and a vesica, but uh, in, we're now going to basically focus in on uh, this area and simplify the diagram as much as I can. I've drawn a basic Pisces now without changing the size of the compass. I'm just going to mark one point which is I could draw the whole circle but unnecessary. The other side, now we're going to draw a construction line which will form the base of the Great Pyramid or this um, particular geometry. And now we need to readjust and set it to the Width of the entire this particular point there. And we're going to draw an arc down, repeat on the other side. So these will be the corners of that and the peak. Together and we have that design template of uh, five pi and uh, architecture and the Great Pyramid. But um, now that we've drawn them, then we'll go back and have a look at uh, what the actual ratios are and some other um, aspects and important little details that come from that. It's, uh, the vessel of the fish is a container of knowledge. It's, it's, it's a very nice way to put it, I think. So now we've replicated that same drawing with two different methods. And we're going to test and have a look at this diagram, which um, uh, goes around quite a bit. And, um, yeah, we might add it that at this point that uh, by definition doesn't matter. <coughs> Pardon me, but units don't matter. But um, when we to talk about the ratios, the units don't matter. So, but by definition, it's 440 Egyptian royal cubits uh, base width. So the half base is 220, and the height is. 280 and it's claimed that this is equal to phi and 
essentially it is that we're, uh, it's a bit more, um, uh, if we sort of examine it a bit closer, we actually, there's a lot of information and interesting coincidence that will come out of it. So, uh, we've drawn it and we've established a half base is 220 Egyptian roll cubic. That's so we're looking at the right, ang right angle triangles that make up this particular design. And the uh, height is 280 Egyptian roll cubits. So 280 Egyptian roll cubits. So um, we can simplify that down to now 14 over 11. And then we use Pythagorean theorem a squared plus b squared equals uh, c squared, which is uh, 11 squared plus 14 squared equals c squared, so 121 plus 196 equals 317. Therefore, c equals square root of 317, and that. based on the ideal measurements and, and on the south side this is true but each face of the pyramid has a slight deviation so even it, um, this is very close but depending on the aspect of how you look at the pyramid it actually gets much closer it's a bit more uh, detailed but uh, essentially this is, uh, is true uh, with, with the, uh, less than a, a, a centimetre um, deviation in the margin of error or even in the measurements because of the degradation of the pyramid and the lack of the um, casing stones around the base to give but uh, well, that's something I'll come back to later but so um, To de depending on how many decimal points, but in the in the human scale, at least that that comes true. Um, and uh, this is now related to the uh, square root of five and the height. So. Uh, So we're going to look at uh, 4 over pi, and that would be 220, or 11 to 17.0, and 280 Egyptian royal cubits high, which is, that's what we're really looking at. So, 14 over 11 equals 1.272772, the square root of 5 equals 1.270272. Okay, so again, it comes um, very close to the square root of 5, but pi over 4 is also. Uh, there and uh, 4 over pi equals 
three, two. Um, so both these are true uh, over 99.99% uh, and so what we have on one side is a ratio of 1.2732 and on this side the, the, uh, the perfect fire ratio would be 1.272 uh, uh, but what we really have is 1.272727 and repeat or not. So we're um, a little bit below there and a little bit high on this side from perfect. But again, these are ideal measurements and as you move around the pyramid, different things happen so we have to take those into account um, later. Now that I've, yeah, so we've drawn a couple of methods. If I was to stand at the corner of the Great Pyramid, the height remains the same, 280 Egyptian royal cubits, or simplified to seven, but now the visible base is doubled. So it's no, it's 11 and 11 in ratio to seven, making it 22 in total. So, uh, as the two, if you look at it as a 2D plan, you get half pi. But if you look at it as a three-dimensional plan, we get 22 over 7, which is equal to 880 over 2. 880 is the base of the Great Pyramid, 440 Egyptian roll cubits. 280 is the height. So these are both Egyptian roll cubits. But the, whether I was to use metres or feet, it doesn't matter. The proportion is 22 over 7, viewing it in three dimensions.